From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Tuning to our channel today. This evening I want to talk a few minutes about uh, herpes simplex. Herpes simplex, a very, very common problem. People call it at different names like cold sores or fever sores or genital herpes. A very, very common things are a very, very important thing to know about. Most importantly, they present as a group of vesicles within the matter space, either in the oropharyngeal region or in the genital area. And many times they are exacerbated by sun exposure and resulting in the lymphadenopathy around the, uh, the pharyngeal areas. Now, let me give you a few basic points. HIV is the, uh, sorry, this uh, herpes simplex virus is the most common cause for orolabial and genital ulcers. It is caused by HSV-1, which is most commonly associated with the infection of the face including uh, the eyes and the pharynx and the mouth, and also HSV-2. HSV-2 most commonly affects the anogenital ridge infections. But you see, the serotypes are capable of uh, infecting other reg either region. For example, the HSV-1 can most commonly affects the mouth, but it can also cause genital lesions. In the same way, HSV-2 most commonly affects the genital areas, but it can also cause orolabial infections. But most commonly, HSV-1 in the orolabial, HSV-2 genital area. Now, many times people will have this asymptomatically, and um, they later develop the infection whenever the immunosuppression happens. Many times patients can come with severe gingival stomatitis with a lot of pain around the lips and gums and uh, most commonly you see this in HSV. And the good thing is they are self-limited attacks and these self-limited attacks can be provoked by sun exposure when patients go out on a beach or sometimes when they have some surgery in this area. Also sometimes fever, a viral infection. These can exacerbate, these can uh, inflame that virus which is latent in the ganglia and can cause this infection. And there are tons and tons of people, I mean uh, at least like 20% of federal population is infected already by these uh, viruses. HSV-2, I mean it causes lesion, the morphology, and uh, see the morphology and the natural history both for HSV-1 and HSV-2, the morphology and natural history is the same. It can affect the genitalia of both sexes and uh, it can be acquired by sexual contact. And uh, even in monogamous heterosexual couples, if one partner becomes infected by HSV-2, the other partner can also get it. And the zero conversion of the non-infected partner, and uh, it happens, and it can occur in 10% over a one-year period. So in the next one year, they have a, the non-infected partner has a 10% risk to get infected from the infected partner. And the 70% of the, that uh, uh, infection goes through shedding of the virus. Now, genital herpes may also be due to HSV-1. You remember I said that uh, HSV-1 can affect genital lesions. So that happens. Now, what are the symptoms? Many times, symptoms will tell you the whole story. The patient comes with saying burning and stinging sensation. So when you hear these two words, burning and stinging sensations, with the lesions around the mouth, Think about herpes. Also, they get this neurologic pain, whether preceding the attack or along with the lesions. And the lesions, the most important thing is small vesicles. 
vesicles with erythematous base. That's the most important point. And they can affect the borders of the lips and uh, around all the mouth, like uh, both the lips and sometimes spinal shaft. And in woman labia and uh, perianal skin. And uh, as this sexual transmission happens, the virus spreads around. And uh, it causes these lesions wherever that virus uh, get, uh, attacks the area of the skin. And the regional lymph nodes, gets, uh, they get swollen up and they become tender. And um, these vesicles, they crust and they heal after one, one week. So those are the most important things, folks. And when you see these patients, and if think about all these things, but also when they get these uh, symptoms again and again, think of HIV. The other important thing is the latency. The HSV-1 stays in the trigeminal neurology, whereas HSV-2 stays in the sacral ganglia, you see. That is where the latent virus stays in the body. Trigeminal neurology for HSV-1 and sacral ganglia for HSV-2. From trigeminal ganglia, this virus can become inflamed when the immunosuppression happens and cause the lesions. And uh, from trigeminal, uh, sorry, for some sacral ganglia, HSV2 can affect uh, people and cause. So those are the most important points when you think about this. So if you look a patient with the border of the lip with vesicles with an erythematous base and the patient complaining of stinging and burning sensation, that is uh, HSV1 in most common cases. And if you see a patient coming with the pain and the vesicles and saying that he got some cold sores around his uh, penis or, or the labia major or minor, then it is HSV2. The reason is they are being inflamed from the areas they have been uh, latently staying. And uh, when you see these patients, you need to diagnose this condition and then give them some treatment, especially symptomatic treatment is very important because you are not taking the virus away from their body, you see but you are suppressing that virus. Now, let us say a few things about uh, laboratory findings. Most often, you don't even need to do the testing because the lesions with the characteristic clinical history, it helps you to identify this and also do differential diagnosis to distinct these lesions from syphilis or pyoderma or chancroid or trauma. The history and physical exam helps to do that. If not, there is direct immunofluorescence antibody slide test that gives you, helps you to do a rapid sensitive diagnosis. You can also do a viral culture. It helps to identify the virus. And herpes serology is not used in the diagnosis of acute genital ulcer. However, the specific HSV2 serology by Western blood can be used. Okay, so Western blood or ELISA test, they are useful to identify the specific HSV type. And uh, as I said earlier, you can do direct immunofluorescence test. You can do Western blood test or ELISA test. All these tests, they help you to identify the virus. Now, what about the complications? There are many, many complications associated with this uh, problem. And uh, number one, pyoderma, pyoderma gangrenosum, then eczema, herpeticum, herpetic weight loss when the herpes virus attacks the fingers 
and there is herpes gladiatorum. This is the epidemic herpes transmitted by contact among the wrestlers. You see these big, big sumo wrestlers as they go into that contact sport, they transmit the herpes virus from each other. And in mothers, neonatal infections can pass through mother to babies and encephalitis and uh, uh, also sometimes herpetic vitlo. Herpetic vitlo with the large pustules uh, superimposed on erythematous plaques on the finger. So if you see a vesicle on your finger with an erythematous base, that is herpetic vitlo. So herpetic vitlo is also another common question in this area. Now how can we prevent this? You can use sunscreens because sunscreens help against the sun-induced recurrences. As I said, you see, sunlight can exacerbate the infection. So you are protecting the patient from sun exposure using a sunscreen, thereby preventing an attack by herpes. And also systematic treatment. The systemic treatment, there are three agents, folks, just three agents. Number one, acyclovir, number two, valacyclovir, and number three, famcyclovir. Simple. So, three agents, acyclovir, valacyclovir, and famcyclovir. All three agents, they have a very effective profile, and if you use them properly, they never cause any toxicity. So, remember these three agents. And among these three agents, only acyclovir is available for intravenous administration. So acyclovir, you can give IV and oral. Famcyclovir and valcyclovir, they are available as oral agents. Now, what about uh, the suppression? For these three agents, you don't need to worry about uh, the dosages. For example, a cyclovir, like uh, 400 milligrams or 800 milligrams, five times a day. Well, a cyclovir, 1,000 milligrams, twice a day, okay? And fam cyclovir, it's like 250 milligrams, three times a day. You see, those are the three agents. Cyclovir, fam cyclovir, a cyclovir. And you use them like seven to ten days when the patient comes with this problem. And many times when recurrent attacks happen, you need to keep these patients on maintenance doses. You can again use all three agents for maintenance treatment. The cyclovir, farm cyclovir, well cyclovir. And uh, you can keep people on one of these medications as suppressive agents. And also a cycle where ointment is available. Whenever there is vesicles in just one spot, you can actually use a, a cycle where ointment in these patients. Sometimes to give relief from the pain, you have to add a little bit corticosteroids, like local corticosteroids, to give relief from the pain, from the burning and stinging sensation that comes from these medications. So that's about herpes simplex. Please remember the most important uh, points because uh, this is a very, very common thing. I see tons of patients with this problem in my clinic. And uh, so, uh, get the points you that take your attention. Also post you the whatever important points if I have uh, missed. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.